Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is searching for multiple strings with ITX. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett Tech. The inspiration for this video came from a need. I needed to comb through all the lines of a rather large file and capture any lines that matched any one of a number of strings. DOS commands were not helping. The command shown would only find lines that contained both, but not either. I found a DOS find str that would do the job, but I wanted to use ITX to solve my need. So. In a nutshell, I designed a couple of quick type trees and a map that would accomplish the task. That's enough of the why, let's move on to the how. I'm going to start this demonstration in the ITX Design Studio. As you can see, my workspace is open and I have one project called Multi-String Find. Under the miscellaneous section here, we have two files. We have an input file and we have a strings.txt file. Let's drag these side by side. As you can see, the input is fairly simple. We've got the string cat in the first sentence, the string dog in the second. The third sentence does not contain any of our key words that we're looking for. And the fourth sentence contains three of the keywords, fish, cat, and dog. And the fifth sentence again contains none of them. Let's move on to the map. Under map files we have multi-string-find.mms and if we go into the multi-string-find map we have two input cards, one reading the input file, one reading the string list. In both cases they're reading lines delimited by the new line character. On the output side, as you can see, I have three output cards. I'm going to delete output card three for the moment and output card two. And let's concentrate on what output card one does. Output card one writes to out temp one dot txt. There's a repeating group of rows and for each one of the rows it finds on input text item of the input file, it drops to the functional map and takes the entire string list, which is input card two, with it. In the functional map, we are bringing in, in input card one, the full sentence into in one. And then we're dropping to yet another functional map for an unknown number of number items. Now the quantity here is determined by how many keywords we are looking for. In my case, I'm looking for three, cat, dog, and fish, so this functional map will execute three times. In each execution, we're taking down the whole sentence again and one of the keywords. F underscore each search string is just going to execute a simple find. It's going to look for the keyword in the sentence. So at this level, every sentence, we're going to have a variable number of numbers each one representing how many of the keywords it found for each one of the search strings. So this might say I'm the first sentence cat and this will have three rows of numbers which will say one zero zero because there was one instance of cat, zero instances of dog and zero instances of fish. So let's build and run this map and have a look at the output. The map is run. I haven't saved it because I've deleted those two output cards that I want to bring back again later. In the miscellaneous section, you'll note we have an out temp one dot txt. And here are the numbers I spoke about. This sentence contains the cat string. So it contains a positive number to indicate that it was found at position 28. And it's got two zeros in to show that the dog and the fish were not found. This sentence says it found dog at position 32, no cats and no fish. In this sentence, we're seeing 000, no keywords were found. In this sentence, we've got three positive numbers indicating that all three were present. 
So what good are these numbers at the end of these sentences? Well, that's where the other two cards come into play. Let's close that temporary file for the moment, close the map without saving it, and bring back the original. OK, out final one is going to be writing to a file called output1.txt. Again, it's going to drop to a functional map, and it's going to use as an input rows of out temp one. So for each one of those, it's going to drop to a functional map called each row zero. In the functional map, each row zero, we are going to do an if and check that the sum of all of these numbers, and if it comes to zero, then it's going to write out the sentence that is in the text item. However, if any of those numbers are positive, it's not going to do that, so this line will be blank. Back to the top level, and out final two does the opposite. It's still going to drop down to a functional map for every single one of the output rows in out temp one. This new functional map is called each row non-zero. And in each row non-zero, we're doing an if, and only retrieving the sentence from text item if the sum of all these numbers is greater than zero, i.e. one of the keywords was found. So let's build and run this map and have a look at the contents of those two files. The map completed successfully and we now have output one and output two. Let's open those. Okay, output one was the product of running the each row zero and basically it retrieves any sentence where the numbers at the end all added up to zero. So we get the sentences that do not contain any of the keywords. But output 2 is the more interesting file, which is the result that we actually want, and contains any string that contains any one or more of the keywords. Now both files, you will notice, contain lots of spaces. Um, this is unavoidable due to the design of my type tree. And I have got a quick fix for that if I was to run the other version of the map that I created called multi-string find 2. The original output cards 2 and 3 are now set to sync and not write at all. And I have a new pair of output cards called 4 and 5, out final 1, out final 2, where I just bring in each one of the outputs of 2 and 3 without doing anything to them special, but by just copying them to another card, it collapses all of the spaces that don't need to be there. So if I build and run this map, you'll notice the files now have all the spaces collapsed, and the output to file is the one that I'm looking for that has a summary of the lines that contain any one of the strings that I'm looking for. I hope you found that demonstration useful. The link to these maps can be found in the notes for this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, hit that like button. Perhaps leave me a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett tech. Thank you.